We built the Trans-Canada Highway. We built the railways. We did own the CNR at that time and it was our national railway. We continued to create uh, up to about 37% of our national uh, money was spent into existence to create infrastructure and social services. During this period of time, we gave family allowance uh, for uh, families, for children's benefit. Uh, we built up the colleges. We uh, uh, brought in uh, old age pensions and uh, we brought in Medicare. Now that continued very nicely. The government funding from the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Canada spending the money into existence and at this point the uh, international bankers, uh, the Bank for International Settlements and the, the uh, World Bank and the IMF uh, started to put the squeeze on politicians and said you are encroaching on the services that the banks give. You should not be printing the money that the people need. We should be. And immediately we started to go into debt. And these figures only go to 1987. However, uh, uh, the, the debt actually rose up to 600 billion. But in 1987, our national debt stood at 523.3 billion. Uh, this is the history of Canada. Now, from here, there was, there were no food banks in Canada that I knew of. There were no homeless people. Uh, w lotteries were illegal. <laughs> uh, we didn't have to have runs to finance uh, medical care or uh, cancer uh, research. Uh, Canada thrived through those years. We also set up Canada as a peacekeeping nation during those years. So we have a proud history from 1935, basically, until about 1974. And I would like to point out that here, in 1974, our national debt stood at a mere $18 billion. During this period of time, a lot of Canadian companies could be self-financing. Once the international bankers uh, began to get control of uh, uh, policy through government, get control of government, uh, the international bankers, the private banks, encouraged uh, expansion of uh, Canadian-owned industries. Oh, you, you can borrow from us. And the process of putting nations, putting corporations, putting companies, putting peoples into debt began. And from that point on, uh, the uh, encouragement was, well, borrow from us. No one seemed to realize that when they borrowed from a private entity like that, that was not real money. That was putting your own uh, um, assets at risk. Uh, and as a result, we lost the Canadian National Railways through this. And Canadian National Railways was just such an incredible railway system. Uh, it just crisscrossed uh, the country in more ways with spur lines than our highways are today. And they serviced the people. But that was got rid of. And uh, so uh, goods and services now are transported by truck rather than rail and we do not own Canadian National Railways anymore. The only thing Canadian about it is that it's still called Canadian National Railways. Oh, I like to think of Canada, what Canada would look like if we got control of our money system. We would not sell any schools to finance education, we would build more schools, we would get smaller classes, we would build the best educational tools and install them into the schools so that people understood, our children grew up understanding what a rich land we are and understanding principally what qualities of life uh, they can have if they get the benefit of their labors through life. Uh, we would have no unemployment. 
uh, we would have uh, lots of holiday time, uh, uh, but we'd keep everyone working and everyone would be producing according to their own natural inner creative abilities. And yes, we recognize that there are some people who uh, haven't been uh, as fortunate as others with uh, their mental uh, abilities, uh, but there, there is a place for everyone, and we would find that place, and we would be a happy, happy land. We would not exploit territories for profit. Ethical financing is means that we are evolving to a higher moral standard, and that is a good thing. Dr. Muhammad Yunus is a perfect example with uh, uh, his bank, which actually deals in billions of dollars now. Poverty is not caused by the poor people. Poverty is caused by the system we built. Poverty is caused by the policies that we pursue. Grameen Bank has made a significant contribution to reducing poverty in Bangladesh. Since Grameen's creation in the 1970s, life expectancy has risen more than 20 years. The fertility rate has been cut in half. It is estimated that each year, 200,000 Grameen members and their families escape poverty. That process has been used effectively. We don't need uh, that kind of thing in Canada because we already do create our own money through the Bank of Canada. We just don't make use of the Bank of Canada because uh, it's, it's not... Uh, our governments don't control the banking and the creation of money. But alternate banking systems do exist and they are very effective where people can manage to hold it together. May it be an evening star shines down upon you. May it be when darkness falls, your heart. Once people understand that money is not something mysterious, but that money is something that we each create when we give of ourselves in some way, either in goods or services, and it should represent nothing more than that exchange of goods and services. And it's not a difficult concept. It is so simple that as John Kenneth Galbraith stated, the mind is repelled. The creation of money is so simple that the mind is repelled. And yet, through obfuscation, through blurry funding, confusing statements, uh, the ordinary people do not understand. But once they understand, uh, there'd be a revolution by before morning. That's what Henry Ford stated way back when. <laughs>